Hi, I'm Dr. Sharon DeVivo, president of Vaughn College, now in our 90th year and host of our podcast, Future Proof Focus. Through unscripted, honest conversations with prominent industry leaders, students, faculty, and alumni, we will explore diversity, equity, and inclusion in education and employment, and the forces that drive personal and career growth. Let's dive in. I'm so happy to be joined by my colleague, Ms. Chandra Daniels, Director of Career Services here at Vaughn. In her less than one short year, although it probably feels like 10, Chandra has reinvigorated career services in so many ways. Her passion for helping our students find career paths is fueled by her 20 year tenure supporting individuals to find work and purpose in their lives. From employer engagement days, just one of the many programs that she's put in place and some of which we'll talk about today, uh, provide a new way for students to access employers through one-on-one -on -one meetings and other opportunities that we'll get into. So Chandra, welcome. I'm so glad you could be here. Thank you, Sharon. I'm so excited to be here. I am the number one fan of this podcast. So thank you for having me. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So tell us a little bit, Chandra, about your background and what brought you to Vaughn. Um, well, I am a career services services professional, um, but I am a Jill of all trades. I've worked in healthcare. I've worked in nonprofit sectors. I've also um, worked in, with people with disabilities. Um, and so um, what brings me to Vaughn is my passion for helping students find their passion and their dream jobs. And I actually stumbled upon Vaughn during my job search um, as I returned to the workforce after being a caregiver for my father. Uh, for four years and wanted something of substance. I just didn't want to come back into the workforce doing what I had done prior to leaving. Um, and so when I came across um, the job posting, I was like, no, this can't be real. Um, I'm a Queens native, born as in Queens. And I actually looked you all up on Google. I was like, wait, that's part of the airport. And I just really was just like, wait, that's a school? Like, it really, really boggled me um, that this this beautiful diamond of a place was hidden um, so long um, that I really wanted to find out more of what you were about and applied. And here I am. It's been a great um, almost year, I think, in November, right? Yes. Yeah. And um, you've been a terrific team member and contributor. So, all right. So we know based on the number of phone calls that you get and I get as well, that the fields that we serve um, are booming, right? Aviation and aerospace are hiring at record levels um, as a result of the workforce shortage, as well as post-COVID travel surges. So we know STEM fields are in high, career, uh, high demand. We know we're not going to produce enough engineers, pilots, maintenance technicians for the next 20 years, and that students really want to enter college with a defined career pathway. And especially for Vaughn, they want one defined around STEM. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about the craziness you're seeing right now? And how do you oh. compare in your career to sort of past hiring frenzies? Well, this actually is, um, I feel like everything aligned up. I came at the right time. Um, and just to, to support what you said earlier, I enjoy being here. You guys are wonderful team, colleagues to work with, and Vaughn was just a place to be. And I think also with the timing um, of the pandemic and with the work shortage and the retirement, everything folded into a perfect storm of sorts. Um, and so I literally come to work with at least 20 emails in my email email box inbox per day. Um, and I literally have to give phone calls back to employers, asking them to post jobs that they send me to send out. I send out my colleagues at one love me for the emails that I send constantly. Um, because the jobs are pouring in. Um, there are no shortage of jobs in our industry. Um, our, our students are at a, uh, it is an opportune time to be a Vaughn student or a student of any um, aviation uh, school at this point because you the jobs are there. But especially here at Vaughn, um, the relationships have been built. Um, we are known in the industry. And so they're calling because we have one alum even in the industries now that are doing, are excelling at work. Um, and they want some more of that talent. So we're excited. Um, Vaughn is at the pinnacle of what's happening and I'm glad to be here to be part of the process. And what sort of jobs are you seeing that are, are the most in demand, would you say? Do they fit into you know one or two buckets? 
No, everything. Um, if you're an engineering major, the jobs are available to you. If you are aviation, operations management, even down to ATI and AMP, they are scouting us at the door. Um, and so there are no jobs and no 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 particular sect in the industry that um, are over overwhelmed. Um, everyone is seeking our students at an alarming rate, but also because they know who we are. I think um, ha- being a Vaughn student, having the Vaughn credential um, and learning from our Vaughn instructors is what really is helpful in catapulting what we're seeing. Um, and I think our students are doing a fantastic job in responding. Um, for our engineers, you know, megatronic engineering is something that is, is very hot right now, but our students are actually doing internships, right? They're going out to internships um, where they are getting summer uh, jobs to have help to assist their learning in the classroom, they're getting experiential learning. So on the engineering side, we're seeing a lot of, of that. On the aviation side, our, te- our, our technicians, right? Um, these planes are flown by fabulous pilots, but in addition to that happening, the support of having um, a plane that can fly, um, and our technicians are responsible for that, the safety that they put in, um, and what they learn here. So our AMPs, um, you know, Bowen came to us this summer and really was blown away and picked up two students, four students um, just coming to campus um, and meeting with our students. So, you know, we're excited um, on, all, all, on all fronts. And I love when you name drop. <laughs> well, you know what? You know what? I, I don't mind name dropping and, and, and Bowen happens to be my, my, my um, I can't even say favorite, but they're so awesome. Like they're really, really awesome. Um, and having worked with them over the past year and for them to be one of my inaugural employers, Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just one of those relationships that have happened here at Vaughn. Um, You get to meet some phenomenal people. But Mm -hmm. until then, I never realized how important the aviation industry is to not only our economy, but just the safety piece, right? Mm -hmm. When we just Mm -hmm. think we want to get to A and B, but you can't get to A and B without all the stuff that happens behind the scenes. And I'm Mm -hmm. so excited it's like I opened up a lottery ticket and I won. I definitely feel like that to everybody every day. I r- literally hit the lottery when I came to, to Vaughn. So just to help orient our listeners, A&P is airframe and power plant. So that's yeah. uh, that's the shorthand yeah. version of what a aviation maintenance technician needs in order to, to actually do their job. They have to be FAA licensed. Um, so they go through a really rigorous program and then are tested in terms of a written test, an oral test, and a practical test before they're allowed to fix or repair aircraft. So um, just just to, for those listening, uh, we are an industry rife with acronyms. <laughs> and, so we- and, I'm, and I'm learning them and I'm getting excited because when I used to type emails, um, I'm not sure if you remember the the, the grocery store called AMP. Um, I was like, wait a minute, that, I'm, but it's AMP uh, for aircraft mechanic professional. So yeah. yes, thank you. The lingos and the, and the acronyms are, are fluent here. Yes. Yes. So Chandra, you've talked a lot about the employers that are seeking us. What is your area doing to really prepare students the best possibly, but the best possible way that we can so that employers are like, you're it, let's go. I'm glad you asked that question because uh, our career services office really is the office of students. This is a, uh, this is a student driven office. Uh, the students come in and they let us know where they are. You have to meet the students where they are and what their needs are. And a lot of our students, are asking for resume development and interview prep. How do I present myself? How do I articulate my skill set? Um, and what we're seeing is that our students are very, very, um, how can I put it, um, eager to make sure that they present themselves in the best way possible. And so um, we have an open office and we try to make our hours available for times that fit the Vaughn schedule. Um, and that are fitting how we are operating on campus. But most importantly, we want our students to feel comfortable being able to present themselves as they are. Um, And we meet them where they are. We have students that have had three or four internships and are doing fantastic. And we have students who are just starting out. And just um, prior to um, us speaking today, I had a workshop on um, how to prepare for a career fair, how to work a career fair. And I had 10 freshmen um, who had never been to a career fair before, but they were honest um, and they were vulnerable. And by the end of the session, they all helped each other. Um, and it was really, it was great to see and hear that they're excited about um, what's to come, but they're freshmen. 
And so this is what we want to do. We want to catch our students early when they come in the door to help them understand at the end is really, really about the beginning. What you start and how you start is and what you get in the beginning, what we can offer, we're here for you. And so our office is definitely um, tapped into our early uh, pipeline students, which is our freshmen and sophomores, and getting them engaged and helping them seek internships. So you really want to see them at the beginning of their academic tenure with us, not at the end, right? That's Absolutely. how you can get them in the best possible shape. Absolutely. And yeah. here's, the, here's, here's, here's what's important because the core competencies that are needed for, for all industries, but most important in ours, um, is teamwork and leadership um, and the ability to communicate. Um, and so if we help our students early become comfortable with their peers as they go through the time um, and their tenure here at Vaughn, they're interacting with faculty, they're interacting with employers, the early onset um, with anything, but especially interaction with employers helps you, as you and I both know, it's part of your networking piece. Um, a lot of what happens in any industry is the hidden job market, which is networking, but mostly is being able to speak comfortably and confidently um, about who you are and being able to, to, to succinctly uh, give an employee what they're looking for as far as how you can articulate your skills. So you've talked a little bit about how we get students ready. You've talked about the demand from the employer side. Talk a little bit about some of the programs that you've really spearheaded in your short time with us. You know, employer engagement days, which I think have been really terrific for students. Mm -hmm. Some of the pathway programs, some of the internships, the partnerships that you're talking about. You know, what really excites you about those connections um, that employers want to make with Vaughn students? That this that is such a that we could be here for another hour with that, but I'm going to be succinct um, and be obedient to the question and answer it. Um, I'm excited about. I found I was able to find a place where students know what they want. The students that are here at Vaughn know why they came to Vaughn and know what majors they want to be in. Um, and so, as someone who was new to the industry, as someone who was new to the Vaughn culture, um, some of the programs that were put in place was to help me learn about who you all were and, the, to, and who the students that I'm in service to. Um, and so the employment, employee engagement days, well, those were to get employers back on campus um, just to become familiar and say, hey, guys, we're open for business. Um, and secondly, for our students not to feel so intimidated after coming out of a pandemic, sitting at home, working through Zoom, trying to figure out what life is going to be. Um, we all were affected um, by what's happened in the last two years. Um, but when it's time to get back to business, it's not just about getting back to business. You have to develop those relationships. Um, and I wanted to make sure that um, our office was developing relationships correctly with our employers, but also that they got to see our students in their own environment and that our students got to see employers in their own environment on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So there wasn't an intimidation of a sale of competing at, uh, at, at a conference um, or a larger um, event. Uh, and what it allowed our students to say was, oh, it's okay. Oh, you know what? We're still connected. And it allowed our employers to say, oh, okay, Vaughn is back up. They're running. Their students are still doing. So it was able to hold each partner's hand. I, I tell students all the time, I'm a job broker, right? So I have I have the students here and I have the employees here and I bring them together. And I, I needed to hold their both of their hands and they needed to hold my hands because I was new as well. Um, and how to broker these relationships for all of us involved. And those were helpful. Um, career pathways, um, that's something that I'm excited about because it gives an opportunity for our flight students to be connected to um, our airlines in a way, as you know, there's a shortage, but that they are aware of what the opportunities and outcomes are for them as they go through their process. And we've um, developed a few um, with the help of our chair, um, of the aviation department, um, Mr. Ron Majeri, and he's been really, um, we've been working like a team. So they called me about jobs to post. And I said, oh, by the way, are you interested in discussing a career pathway? Oh, sure, Chandra. Let me call Ron, get him on the phone. Um, and he's able to speak um, to their needs and listen to hear what we need um, in order to make a career pathways possible. So um, it's a collaboration between faculty and our office to get those up and running. Um, we've had workshops that we put together, um, the professional development workshop series, start from scratch, our resume building, 
effective interviewing, excuse me, in, in industry resume building, effective interviewing, um, and being able to network at conferences. Um, one of the things Vaughn can pride itself as saying, and thanks to um, your office and, and our development office and our student affairs office of supporting the student experience. Um, students going out into these conferences early on um, and are able to articulate who they are. I had an employer um, from the FAA reach out to me and said, I don't know what you guys are doing over there, but keep doing more of it. These students are phenomenal. Now, I didn't go to the conference um, just because of conflicting schedules, but our students represented so well that the employer came to campus. This particular division of F F FAA had not been here um, and actually is now taking on a couple of students to mentor. So again, it's really um, having us transferring a, a, a sense of, of confidence, a, a sense of resilience, um, and a sense of support that, yeah, it's okay, go ahead. Um, but if they don't get out, right, we're in the aviation industry. Every student should be able to at least go to a conference and see and travel. A lot of these jobs are asking you to relocate, um, get in the habit of traveling. So being able to to work on, on those relationships has been helpful in preparing the students for that. And then lastly, um, developing internship programs that are fruitful and meaningful um, and that will benefit not only the employer, but the student for experiential learning and the value of being paid for learning um, and adding that to their portfolio um, of their Vaughn credentialing. So I think that that's been very helpful. Um, we were able to do that uh, with LaGuardia Gateway Partners. We're very excited. They just started this semester um, and we're looking to see what's going to happen with this first round of, an, of, of, of interns. But they've come to my office with the badges and they're ready to go. And they're like, oh, Ms. Deans, you know, it's stuff that we can't tell you. We're, we're, we're classified. And I was like, uh, okay, just make sure you get the job done, right? So they are very excited. But these are students who prior were not working in the industry. They were working in retail. Um, and it's great to have that experience of working, but for our industry, having early onset industry experience helps the doors open for you. Right. Wow, you talked about a lot of amazing pieces in that, Chandra. And you know, the Student Experience Fund is probably one that sets Vaughn apart from other institutions in that we really support our students um, financially, um, emotionally, socially, getting ready for those conferences because we know that when they meet employers at those events, they've got opportunities that they might not otherwise have, whether it's Absolutely. mentoring or internship or a first-time job, um, and that it becomes a great pathway to something they may not even have considered. Um, Absolutely. So. Absolutely. A valedictorian um, of this past graduate class um, found his job at a conference and he was prepared to go. Um, and we were happy um, that he was able to utilize not only um, the financial benefit of going to um, the conference, but what we had prepared for him to present for himself um, and his organization that he was representing at the conference but to know that he graduated and was able to go right into work and something that he loved um, and wanted to do um, is that that's what that's what makes the job um, that I do so enjoyable is that you really get to hear people's dreams and see them come true um, and be a part of that. So over the last few years, you know, we've seen companies commit themselves to hiring individuals from diverse backgrounds. Are you seeing a commitment to equity and inclusion when those students get to that all important first position? And how can Vaughn best prepare students for a successful career when they might be the only black person, the only woman, the only Latinx? How can we make sure that they're successful and feel a sense of belonging at those companies? I'm glad you asked that question. You know, diversity is something I'm passionate about. Until recently, I'll be honest with you, I, you know, I've always looked at it one way and then, you know, life happens and you begin to see and you grow and you learn. You never stop learning. Um, and Vaughn has afforded me an opportunity to see things in a whole different palette. Um, but yes, I, but to answer your question, our employers are meeting um, the diversity um, challenge. Um, that really is, when you look at it, uh, Sharon, is the diversity of thought. Anytime you hire a student 
um, that is different from another student, whether it may be whatever box you want to check. Um, you are bringing to the table a different experience, a different thought process, a different way of seeing things, but also a different voice. And that we are doing. And I, I am I'm, I'm happy to say that we are looking at um, it from a, a, a human a humanity perspective instead of looking at it from a more um, challenged perspective we are we are really looking at how we can get the best people hired into these jobs and so um, that can always be a challenge with um, with with EDI and however you want to use the acronym um, but I think the biggest thing of DEI is equity um, when we have the you know the pay equity with, with women and the pay equity between industries. Um, and the pay equity between entry level and long season. So there's the equity piece that we're working through, um, but we're working through. And I think that's key. Diversity is not an easy area to work in because you start hitting on people's emotions um, and people, it's the people stuff. Um, and what we might think might be a diversity issue is not at all. It's just a communication issue. Um, it's a, a, a personality issue. Um, and so I do believe that the, the employers are making efforts in understanding that it becomes a diversity of thought. And if I just hire the right person and I look for what we're supposed to have, then I end up getting. And so our black and brown students, um, and even, you know, we don't have this conversation enough, but even um, our white students, right? Because as we start doing this diversity, people start getting left out. What we don't want to do is do the reverse of what we're trying to do in the first place. So all our students who have something to offer um, are able to have these conversations. And when I talk to students, what do you bring to the table that someone else doesn't bring? What are your unique gifts? What are your unique talents? Um, and having our students focus in that direction um, is very helpful. And I think one of the areas that will help us see this more as we deal with students um, with different abilities. Um, that one you can't see, that one you can't touch, that one has to be either disclosed by the student, and if it is, how do they disclose it? Or if it's a physical disability, is it gonna interfere with how we do our work in the aviation industry, right? And so having students speak to those abilities, right? Not to my disabilities, but what can I do? And changing the conversation, because most times it's the environment that's disabling, not the person. Um, and so I think that's one of the areas that we're beginning to see more work in. Um, we are celebrating that this month, National um, Disability Employment Month is October. Um, and so you'll see a lot of that around as far as advertising. But we have a lot of students with different abilities who are fantastic um, and just need to be reminded what they bring to the table. Um, and when we do it that way, it, we win every time. Yeah, that's a that's a great point. You're right. We we don't include differently abled so many times in these conversations. It's getting better, but it's we have better. we have to keep reminding ourselves that, you know, neurotypical is, you know, what can you get from a neurodiverse person, right? Yeah, have this ability possibly to focus in on something and, and really provide a different kind of, um, that diversity of thought that you right. talked about. It, it really is, the diversity of thought. I, and when, when, I, when I began to shape it in those terms, diversity became easier to work through mm -hmm. because I do want someone different at the table and what they have to bring. Oh, I didn't see it that way. Right. It's exciting to hear. I mean, we have our meetings and we hear different um, opinions and different right. um, avenues of, of, of making sure we service our students. It's so much better than the same old person. Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, it goes, you know, such and such again. We don't get that. Right. I think that's the, that to me, that's the, um, the results of diversity is to make sure we get those voices heard. Well, this has been terrific, Chandra. I have one more question that I ask always of my guests. Yes. Okay. So tell me, what is the most daring thing you have ever done, and how did you talk yourself into it? Again, we didn't want this to be a long thing, so I'm going to stick to the question asked and get right to it. So um, I, I, I told myself that I was going to come into this place, do my job, and go home, but um, somehow it got slipped out the back. So I... Um, got into stand-up comedy about 10, 11 years ago. Um, and I got on stage and I literally didn't know what I was doing. Like, did not know. Just 
you know, um, I was told I was funny. You should be a comedian. Oh, really? I should. They had a school. I didn't know they had a comedy school. So I went to class and I failed comedy school. I failed. <laughs> I, I lied to you not. I failed comedy school. But this is how I failed. I was supposed to bring people to the show, but I was so afraid to tell my friends and family that I was doing this. I just did it on my own. And I just went to support the other comedians. And so when I went on stage after not doing the bring a show, um, I knew that that was a place of my release, just having an opportunity to share thoughts, um, to observe, to share the, the observation of the world um, in a way that was uplifting. Um, and I dared myself just to be who I was. Um, and mm -hmm. here I am 10, 11, 12 years later, um, not as active. Um, but prior to coming to Vaughn, I um, did a fundraiser for STEM and um, our comedy shows raised about $25,000. It's called the BFF Comedy Show, the Beautiful, Funny and Fabulous. Um, and we raised money for uh, Tech Corps, which is a STEM program in Philadelphia. And we were so excited that the comedy community came around and was able to galvanize um, this and been telling jokes ever since. So I don't get to do that as much now because I'm, you know, I'm very focused on what we do and comedy can really pull you in a different direction. Um, but humor um, is something that gets me through the day. Um, and if you have a sense of humor um, with life, you can get through almost about anything. So I'm thankful that I was able to step on stage that one time and realize that, you know what, I can do this anywhere. I just have to realize that the audience is important um, and that everyone has something to smile about. That's awesome. I love, I'm probably never going to get an answer like that to that question. And I was, I knew that about you and I'm thinking, please say the stand-up comedy. Please say the yeah. stand-up comedy. Um, you know, it's so funny because you don't, I, you know, I, I, when you tell people, when people find out you, did you tell jokes? They like want to put a quarter in you and say, tell me a joke. It doesn't work like that. I'm not like, I don't crank out jokes like a jukebox, but I do enjoy a good smile. Um, and you can find humor in anything. So I appreciate you letting me share that. Um, and I, you know, it is, it is, it, it does allow me to do my job that much more because I am able to relate um, to just about anyone because everyone laughs, all yeah. of us. Yeah. Um, and if I can, if you can find the common, language mm -hmm. between all, then, you know, your job is secure. So I, I, I think I'm pretty good here and you yeah. guys have been great. Um, and you guys are absolutely hilarious. Um, I love working, um, and how we're able to interact. This is a really good place to be. Oh, so well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chandra. Future proof tip of the month. Uh, you know, Chandra said it really well, this idea of seizing opportunities early, especially to establish relationships with employers, um, you know, as part of your educational journey is really the key to landing a great career after graduation. So get into career services early and often is what- Early and often. Doing. Yes, we want to see you. We're here. Um, we have a fabulous team. Um, myself, Brian Arias, um, he works with our aviation students, Rosario Sutton, she works with our engineering students. And then most importantly, our career ambassadors, um, Chastity Mello, um, Soraya Nazwa, and uh, Jocelyn Tanesca and all the other students that come in and volunteer and want to help. This is their office, and we want to make sure that we service all the other Vaughn uh, students that come by. We're here for you, and we want to see you succeed. And Your for, success is our success. That's Thank right. You, and for anyone who's ever considered a future in engineering, management, uh, aviation, now is definitely the time to go for it. Yes, yes. We the jobs are there. I Absolutely. listen, Shannon. If I if I if I wasn't in my lovely job, I, I think I would go out and apply to be an engineer and I just don't I just don't have the patience to go back to school. I just don't. I, just don't. I, just, I mean I'm in a school but I don't have the patience to sit in the class. You know what I mean. Absolutely. I think I think it's really but yes, it really the jobs are there. Um and um there's a future in aviation. The sky is definitely um, we, we, we are, we are working with the, this, the future people of the sky, yeah. um, and the sky is, there's no limit. There's no limit. Absolutely. So come on, come on down to Vaughn. We would love to have you. Have a question? Email us at futureprooffocus at vaughn.edu. And don't forget to subscribe, follow, and rate the podcast. Thanks for listening and see you next time.